Hey, welcome back to the channel. I've got something a little bit different today. I'm going to go through all of the stuff that I did, all of the, the technology that I use, and some of the stuff that I've adopted along the way to get me to this point up to where I've got onto YouTube right now. There's going to be quite a bit of stuff in this video, so we'll just go ahead and jump right in and, and get going here. Now, I mentioned the last time I made one of these videos that I think there's a lot of people that are on YouTube that would like to make videos. The ones that so when people come and leave a comment on my channel, and by the way, I don't want people to think that I'm putting a bunch of pressure on them or anything like that when I say this, but when I go and look at comments of people that come to my channel, I'll click over onto their channel to see if they've ever posted anything and what they're posting and their, the strategies that they use and the types of videos that they make. And I've come across a lot of channels when I click over on these, the people that leave comments, I'll click over to their channels and there'll be something that says something to the effect of, I make videos that are around this topic or this topic, but then there's no videos. And I think what it is, is there's, there's a lot of factors that come to play at this, but there's a lot of people that they, something stops them before they ever get started. Or there's also a lot of people that want to make something. They do it for one or two, three months, and then they've made like 10 videos and they think, you know what, I don't think this is going to work out for me. And then they just dip. And the thing with making videos, it's like anything else in life. We'll kind of go through this here in just a little bit. But the thing with making videos is the, the most important part is that you don't quit. I mean, you have to believe that you can do it. You have to want to do it. And you have to actually just go and do it. I mean, that at the end of the day, that's all that it comes down to. And, and I know that some people might look at my channel and say, oh, well, you only have 70 Time of this video, I've got 7,600, 60 subscribers, somewhere around there, which is great and everything. I'll cover that here in just a little bit. I'm not trying to get a million subscriber channel. That's not, I've got completely different things in mind for what I want to do rather than what some people want. But like I said, there's, a, there's things that I've seen throughout my time on YouTube, both as a consumer of the platform and as someone who's creating on the platform, some things that I see that really hold people back. Now, first of all, I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of my playbook here as to what I'm doing to be able to even make these videos. So I'll just go through that here real quick. So first of all, I use OBS Studio. It's probably not a surprise to most people. This is one of the best. In fact, I would go so far as to say that this is the absolute best screen recording software. You can use it to record screens, what I'm using right now. You can also use it to do live streaming. If you've never used it, I really like this software a lot. It's just really great open source, been in the community for a long time, it works really well. The other thing, so for editing videos, now this is DaVinci Resolve. Now you can get DaVinci Resolve or you can get DaVinci Studio. Studio is 300 bucks. I'm gonna tell you right now, you don't need to pay 300 bucks for it. The free version will do pretty much anything that a person could ever want to do with making videos. Unless you're going to do something really advanced, there is some of the some of the stuff get locked behind uh, the paywall here. But I'm talking like it tends to be pretty advanced stuff here. It's not going to be any of the stuff that you need to just start making videos. Now, I'm going to say this because you're probably looking at this right now. I'm going to tell you it takes a fair amount of time to be able to learn to navigate through this software. It took me quite a few video tutorials to be able to get through this because I had to learn how to make color grades. I made a, a manual color grade, I made some LUTs. That's what I'm running on OBS Studios. I went into DaVinci, I filmed some footage straight from my camera because if you try to record straight to OBS Studio and then you try to make a LUT, it won't work. Different video for another time. There's tons of tutorials out there. It takes a while to learn this software. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it. It, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but all of these video editors take some time and effort to use. It's not something that you're going to learn how to use overnight. It's just part of the process, but I really like this software a lot. And then for, you'll need something to make thumbnails, provided you wanna make thumbnails. There are some people that don't, they just let YouTube decide like some random frame within the video. I would recommend making thumbnails even if they're just basic ones. So you can use, Photoshop is definitely the best option. It's got, it's the most powerful of the photo editors. If you want something that is a one-time pay option that also works really well. Affinity Photo is really good. Now there's also some open source tools out there. GIMP is one such tool. I don't particularly care for it. It doesn't work as well as the paid options. It's just because there's a team of developers behind these projects that are paid to work on this stuff full time. So of course it's going to work better 
but it is what it is, whatever you go with. If you want to make thumbnails, you're also going to have to learn Photoshop. And again, it's a skill. It just takes time. I've been using Photoshop for a very long time just to go and make random memes or whatever. Next thing, if you want to record with an iPhone, because one of the things that I tell people, just get a camera and start making videos. If you want to make videos, you do not need to get a fancy studio to start out. What I would tell people is just make videos right away because it's going to get start building that muscle of being able to make videos instead of procrastinating about it. And well, I need to drop $5,000 on gear first. I need a fancy camera, lens, all these light, all this lighting, all this kind of stuff. I, you really should just get started right away because the longer you put it off, the worse the anxiety of getting started is going to be. So, and then if you want to use like an iPhone, I'm pretty sure this works the same as, as Android. I haven't tried this with Android, but I know for iPhone, that's the case. Like you have to install iTunes and then you have to install OBS on the iPhone. Pretty sure it's almost the same thing for Android. Like you'll need to get OBS on your phone. But the cell phone cameras, provided it's not like a $40 cell phone, if you have something like a Samsung Galaxy or an iPhone that's even like five years old, they have really good video. You can just set it to 4K and record with one of those. Works great. Next thing, if you're going to use a computer, which I presume you're also going to want to use OBS, you do need to get yourself a second monitor because otherwise you'll have to minimize OBS. So you need to be able to keep OBS up because, so I'll just kind of drag this on screen here a little bit. So you need to keep it up so that way you can monitor your audio, you can monitor your video, because let's say you go to record an hour and a half video, but you have to minimize it so, you, so it's out of the way. Something goes wrong with your audio, something goes wrong with your video, hour and a half goes by and you open it up, stop recording, and you find out there's some sort of an error. Well, now you have to go and reshoot the entire thing instead of potentially just going and fixing 10 or 15 minutes of something. And then the last thing, so I'm gonna cover second brains here for just a little bit. This is by far the biggest thing. If there's one thing you're going to take away from this video, just one thing, and this is not hyperbole, this is not me exaggerating anything. If there's one thing you're going to take away from this video, you absolutely, positively should have a second brain. If you've never used one, I strongly encourage that you start to use a second brain. Now there's a, a few different options out there. To keep it simple, I'm gonna recommend two. If you're an absolute beginner, you want the, if you want the most easiest option to manage things, and it also actually has the most features and abilities, Notion is going to be your best option that's out there. This software is capable of a ton of stuff. I'm gonna cover second brain stuff here more. The other option is Obsidian. Now, if you go with Obsidian, just make sure that you, there's a, a cloud backup feature. Make sure you don't ever lose your password because they cannot help you recover access to your account if you do. And make sure you get the cloud backup feature or other, because if you don't, it's only available on that machine. And then if you wipe everything out, then you lose your entire second brain. And that could be ca catastrophic for a lot of people. Now, let me go over the second brain a little bit. So I, because like I said, I, this is not hyperbole. I'm not making this up. I started using a second brain probably about eight months ago now, six, six to eight months ago, roughly in that time frame. And I'm going to tell you that it is the single-handedly the biggest transformation that I have ever used for my ability to take notes, keep track of things, learn stuff, improve my work, capabilities because what it is your second brain like it's just like it sounds when you say that it holds basically everything that you put in there it's very easy to go back and search stuff it doesn't matter if you're using notion or obsidian it's very easy to go back and search stuff and it's one of the reasons like that i tell people that writing well actually i probably haven't mentioned this before but writing is one of the most important things that i think a person can ever do and so like i've got this written out here writing is the the most pure form of communication because when you're writing it's not like speaking it's not like you're sitting with a group of friends and listening to and you're you guys are talking about a subject writing forces you to put something on paper, communicate it as clearly as possible, and communicate your ideas. And I'm going to say this because since I've started taking this more seriously, people have probably noticed this. So when I first started making videos, this was 
before I started using a second brain. This was last May. So I've been on YouTube, or back on YouTube now for about 10 months. People probably noticed, the ones that have been around for a while or watch my older videos, noticed that there was a, a quite a few videos when I was first getting started out where I'd have to go back in later and add in some, I'd pin like a comment and say, hey, here's a couple of things that I forgot to mention in the video, or there was a couple of things that needed correction. And what it was is when I was in going and making notes, because I don't ever use a script. Like when I think of a script for YouTube, I'm thinking of something that you read out word by word. And a lot of times when someone records themselves with a talking head video and they're reading a script, it, even if they don't have it up on screen, even if they have it like right below the camera, you can see their eyes move. I don't like writing scripts because it's like, okay, well, my thing is, is like, well, okay, I, I know my material. I don't need to have a script. So what I would do is just have like a few words here. And then I would go and just look at a few of my notes of just a few bullet points and I'd be like, okay, well, now I can go make my video. And then once I started using a second brain, and people have probably noticed this here just recently, what I started doing was start taking some pretty thorough notes. And now what I do is I just put that on notepad and put all that up on screen, which is good for people because it helps follow along with the video because I could make this without notepad. But because there's so much different things I'm gonna cover in this video, it would make it more difficult to follow along with. So there's that aspect of things. But like I said, writing is, writing is like the, it's a sacred form of communication. If you look back through thousands of different years, the, the way that people were kept enslaved and they were subjugated by so many people throughout years, uh, thousands, tens of thousands of years of history, however long that it's been, is they would take people who could not read and write and they were able to manipulate people a lot easier that way. That's the reason that people have become so much harder to manipulate nowadays is because reading and writing has become so much more common. And that's why I said, another reason why I said writing is the most pure form of communication because that is, everything starts with writing. If you think about how something gets engineered, for example, a bridge or an airplane or something like that, it all has to start with writing. All of my videos, that I've made for this channel have started with writing. Every book starts with writing. Every single, so one of the things that I've talked about is that I used to work in construction. Construction starts with writing because you have to write up a blueprint. You, ha you have your plans, your blueprint, all that's, and you have to start with that before you can go start building the house. I cannot overstate how important writing is, but I'm telling you that Getting a second brain has been just absolutely transformational for my ability to learn and keep track of things. I really cannot recommend using one enough. You, I think you will be surprised. It'll take you a few months to kind of start filling it up, get the lay of the land and, and get used to using one, but I, they, they are really great. Now, the next I'm gonna mention, this is a compilation of things. The stuff that I'm talking about on this video it's a compilation of years for, of me being on the platform. Like I said, that's both as a consumer and also for me making videos. One of the things that I'll cover this more in a little bit, you need to be watching YouTube videos in order to get a sense of what is going to work on YouTube and what is not. So I've spent plenty of time on here. I've been using YouTube almost as long as the platform has been around. So that's right around 18 or 19 years at this point. The other thing is that at this point, I've made hundreds of videos. Now you've noticed on this channel, by the time this video goes posted, I think this will be number 85. I've made a lot of videos before they are no longer around because they were just really crappy videos. And I've also made a lot of private videos for business groups. So there's, so I've made a ton of videos done a lot of deep study. So when I say deep study, what I'm talking about, so like I said, I will click over to people that leave comments on my channel. I'll click over, look at their channels. And I spend other time studying other people that are on the platform, looking at what they're doing. I go and read the comment section. I'm looking at their thumbnails. I'm like, okay, why did they use this title? Why did they use this thumbnail? What is the general sentiment of the commenters for this video? I look at all these different things. I'm looking at how they're writing descriptions. I look at their upload schedules. I'm looking to see if they make community posts. So when I see deep study, like I'm really paying attention to what's going on because there's things that you can learn from pretty much everyone. And so I'm looking to see, okay, what is it that they're doing? Is there something they're doing that's working that I'm not doing on my channel? So that's, if you start asking yourself that, I think you'd be surprised at the amount of results that you start getting. Next thing, some of the information that comes in here and some of the stuff that I've adopted and built into my channel over time comes from masterminds. 
Now, masterminds, I'm going to tell you they're pay to play. YouTube is not, I don't recommend joining like a YouTube mastermind. And I'm not in a YouTube mastermind. I'm in business masterminds. You don't need to join one of these to get started on YouTube. I'm just saying that I get some, I've got some really good information for masterminds, but they're absolutely not needed. And then also a lot of education. There's plenty of good channels that are out there. Think Media is one that immediately comes to mind of a, of channels that help educate people on things like picking a good camera or things to make videos about, for example. Now, what I'm about to talk about is 80% of the game. So there's this thing in life, for those who haven't heard of it, it's called Pareto's Principle. It's the 80-20 rule. You get 20% 20, 20 of your work gets you 80% of the results. I really think YouTube is the same thing. If you look at the 80-20 rule, it applies through just about everything that's that exists in life. Like one of the things that I've heard is that 20% of the people do 80% of the work, which Sounds about right. And when I say that, what I'm talking about is really mindset stuff because this is what really jams people up because they think that they don't, they're not sure what they're gonna talk about, which I'll get into that. I'll come up or I'll talk about content ideation stuff. But 80% of it really is mindset. If you can get over this stuff, then the other 20% is you actually sitting down, making the video, doing the editing, making the thumbnails and titles. Because the thing is, if you never even get started, nothing else even matters. You can watch all the videos going through all the tactics. You can have the fanciest video equipment, but if you never make videos, none of this matters. And so that's what I'm really gonna hammer home for most of this video. The last thing I'm gonna mention, some of the stuff that I'm about to cover here is written with industry professionals in mind. Now I had made this video in a couple of different forms for some private groups with uh, some business executives because they were wondering about doing some YouTube stuff. So I was talking with them about it. What I did is I adapted some of the stuff in this video for this video that I'm making right now that's gonna go public. But some of these points were written for, like, like I said, an industry professional or a business person or something similar where you're going to be in a slightly different position than someone who's coming onto YouTube to do entertainment content because they're two very different types of channels and there are some traps that people fall into. If you're gonna be an industry professional or you're a business person or something like that, the way you approach YouTube does need to be quite a bit different than someone that is doing this for making memes, content, or funny videos, or whatever. They're, they're different things there. So let's go ahead and get started here because we got a lot of stuff to cover. First of all, I'm just going to say this. You cannot avoid discomfort. I, there's, no, there's no amount of videos. You can go watch 10, 20, 30 hours. You can go watch courses. You can watch a course on setting up cameras and lenses. You can watch a course on setting up lighting. You could spend 50 hours doing all this research. But in the end, the only thing that matters is that you get the camera out and you start recording. I'm going to tell you that the first videos that I made were absolute garbage. And it took a couple of months of really steady, consistent practice for me to be able to do this. There's no shortcutting that process. Everyone has to go through this. Now, fear will stop you before you start. The thing is, you just have to work through that. Everyone's first, your first dozen, two dozen, three dozen videos are probably going to suck pretty bad. Mine did. I can tell you from watching a lot of other YouTubers that just about everyone's first videos suck. It's just the nature of the beast. There's no way around it. Making videos is a skill. And when it's like your first day on the job, your first day on the job, you're not going to be good at it because you don't know what you're doing there. It's just the way that it is. And you just have to continue to show up and put in the work. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you just continue to show up, that's you've, you've won half the battle at that point. Because the thing that I think a lot of people re don't realize, and especially these days, and it doesn't just apply to making videos, it applies to just about anything in general. People are more than ever having a hard time just showing up, putting in and doing the work. And, and I, the thing is, is the game is hard. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. There's making videos is not easy. There's a lot of time and effort that goes into this. Anything good in life takes a lot of work. One of the things that I see, and I've seen this come up on other channels, like I will see this of people asking questions to these other channels like Think Media. Well, what are some of the easiest ways for me to jump in and get started? What are some tactics to make things more palatable for me to be able to just come in and start doing this? And the fact of the matter is there's, 
there's not like there's nothing you can do you just have to do it it just takes a lot of time and effort to be able to do this stuff and there's like i said there's no way around it Next thing I'm gonna address is the quality versus quantity. I'm gonna come back to this a few different times because there's a lot of aspects to this. I'll just cover this on the surface level here from this point. When you are starting out, if you can get some extra practice, you're going to improve a lot more. And if you can get that extra practice, it's going to make it easier to be able to stick around and keep doing this. So I'll give you some examples. So I come across a lot of YouTube channels I need to come up with a way to aggregate this data. I'm trying to think of a way to do this where I can track all of this stuff because I track a ton of stuff, but it's not in a way that would be palatable for the general public where I could release the stats that I track, the channels, and well, maybe I wouldn't wanna release that because I don't wanna call people out and make them feel bad about where they're at with things. But the, the point is, is that I keep track of a lot of stuff. And one of the things that I see that really gets people messed up is they will think, okay, well, I'm gonna post one video a week, which is fine, one video a week is just fine. But when you're first getting started out, if you're only doing one video a week, it took me about two months to really get comfortable on YouTube, but I was filming a lot of stuff and I was filming just about every single day and I was filming a lot of stuff that I would just move straight to the recycle bin because I thought I even if I edit this, there's no way that I can save this because I just, I couldn't make it through and deliver anything that was halfway coherent because I just struggled to talk to the camera when I first got started. Now, if you put in that extra practice early on, and let's say you're doing two to three videos a week, the way that you get to quality is through quantity, because when you're getting started out, you're not going to know what works best for you. And the mistake that I see people fall, the, the mistake that I see people, people make is that they will go and try to imitate other people, like one-to-one, -one, for example. And I'm not talking about taking elements of things that you like that other YouTubers do and making those work for you. I'm talking other that a lot of people will try to just copy one for one what they see on someone else's channel because they think, okay, well, I like this and I am uncomfortable experimenting, so I'm just going to do this. And then they make like one video a week and then they give up after a month because they, they improved too slowly. Something that's really important when you're getting started out making videos, you need to improve, you need to get quick wins and improve quickly. And one of the best ways to do that is for you to be able to see yourself getting better rapidly because if you make four videos over the course of the month you're just getting started out yes you're going to see improvement but it's going to be a lot slower than someone that's doing this two to three times a week now there's other stuff that gets factored into that like time but it's all about putting in that effort if you can do that up front i'm telling you it will make it a lot more palatable and the thing is is you can also dial it back so i've dialed back to one video a week now because i want to put more effort into my writing i'm sure people have noticed i'm putting a lot more effort into writing stuff daily so i'm writing daily and i have not skipped a day of writing for at least a month now and i was a little sporadic with my writing i want to become much better at writing so i'm that's why one of the reasons i stepped away to make one video a week. And the other is I also have a ton of work going on right now. So, you know, I just told my community, hey, I'm going to be making one video a week. And you can do that. Let's say you make two or three videos a week for a couple of months, you can dial it back later. There's nothing that says you are stuck doing that forever. Next thing, community. So this is really important if you're getting started out. I'm seeing this across the board from a lot of channels that I have gone and studied. Community is going to be the way forward for those people that are new because there, there's a lot of room for new people on the platform, but there's also a lot of competition at the same time. And one of the best ways for you to establish yourself is to focus on building a really strong community. And what I mean when I say community is, let's say, for example, someone comes into your video, you've got 20 subscribers, you get one or two comments on each video, and someone will ask you a question, let's say that it takes two paragraphs to fully answer that question. What I'm talking about is you should fill out the full two paragraphs to answer someone's question. If you go back and look at some of my early videos, there were times I'd do a three or four paragraph response to a question that someone had. Nowadays, what I do, and I've done this a few times, is sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take that to answer that by making a video because then it will help everyone else out that also had that same question. And then there's other aspects like treating people like they're actually people instead of treating people like they're a number. One of the things that I've seen that I think makes really, it's a little difficult for some people to kind of visualize this, but you need to think of everyone that watches your channel as a person instead of just some random number. Oh, this is just 
one of a thousand subscribers. I that's a I think that's a really bad place to get into because when you start just treating people like they're they're just some random number, it's going to show. And here, so here's another example of this: is let's say someone comes in and asks a question. I've seen some YouTube channels do this, by the way. Someone will come in to ask a question, and the person. So on YouTube, the the Creator Studio, when you're going and replying to comments, sometimes you can just click a pre-made response button. It will say something like "Thanks for watching." And what I've seen some YouTube channels do is, is someone will ask a question and you, I can tell the person just went in and hit that, thanks for, for watching. There, a person looks at that and they're like, oh, okay, well, this person doesn't give a damn. They're just taking the path of least resistance and trying to boost engagement, but they're not really trying to build out, you know, they're not really engaging with me. They're probably not engaged with anyone else. It really is easy to spot the people that have the really selfish intentions with making YouTube videos, which if you have selfish intentions, whatever, I don't care. I'm just saying you're going to have a lot harder of a time at this if that's the way that you're going to play the game than if you're trying to focus on building out a actual community. Next thing, version done is better than version none. It, here's the thing, you just gotta film videos and put them out. You can sit there and do a reshoot on your first video 10 different times, but at some point you just have to put the video out and let's just face it, you could reshoot 10 times. I'm saying this because I did this, the very first talking head video that I ever made. I think I did a reshoot about 10 or 15 times before I could finally get through it well enough where I could edit it to have it be a decent enough video, but I just had to put the video out and I could have kept doing reshoots, but that's not going to fix anything. Just put the damn video out and move on to the next thing. What I do now I very rarely do a reshoot unless the audio or the video just something really glitches really bad or if I really forgot some huge stuff that needed to be included in the video, but it's extremely rare. At this point, sometimes I'll, I'll make a mistake, I'll catch it in editing and I'm like, you know what, whatever, I'm just gonna post the video anyway because I'm already moving on to getting the next thing ready to go. Next thing is this, so this will help you out when you're making videos. Is your video a candy? Is it a vitamin or is it a painkiller? Here's what I mean by this. So funny videos, meme edits, things like that, that's candy. It's empty calories, yeah, it's funny. And the thing is, you could get a lot of people to come and watch it. Vitamins is going to be something that helps people out. It can help them improve. So like me making videos on here's a good firewall that can help prevent you from getting hacked. That would be an example of a vitamin. It's helping someone improve a situation. And then a painkiller could be, if, so for example, in, in the case of my channel, it would be something like, oh, here's how you fix a broken Windows installation. When you broke something in Windows registry, here's how to fix it. That would be an example of something that's a painkiller. Each of these have different types of audiences. Each of them have different intentions behind each of the videos. And each one has kind of its own way that you would want to film it. So you would not want to do a bunch of meme edits for a video that has the intention of being a vitamin or a painkiller. It's not gonna work. I've seen some people try to do it. Those kind of videos just fall flat because people are trying to be funny on a video that it, there's absolutely no reason to be funny on the video. It just doesn't fit. Now here's another way to look at this and you can try this out for yourself. Think of, so I don't know how many people watching this video have ever gone to a steakhouse, but a lot of steakhouses that you go to, when you go and order a steak, they go to bring it out. Sometimes other people will order something other than a steak and then they see the, the, the wait staff bring out your steak and they'll, it'll come out, it'll be sizzling on the platter. It'll be making a bunch of noise, it smells amazing. Everyone turns and they look at it and they think, wow, I would love to be able to try that steak out. So sizzle is something that is, it's a wrapper. It brings in, it's that thing that draws people attention to want them to consume something. The steak is the thing that actually fills people up. That's where, so that would be like delivering value, delivering something that's going to help people out. Now, because I make educational focused videos, my videos have a ton of steak and they have very little sizzle. Now I've noticed there's been a few times where I've experimented putting sizzle in my videos. One of them was the Microsoft hack video from about two months ago. That had quite a bit more sizzle to it and you can go look at the view count. It reflects as much. You can look at the cookie stealer video where that was quite a bit of sizzle. I got a lot of people's attention with that. It, ha it has, as of the time of, this, of me making this video, something like 220,000 views. That's an example of putting sizzle in something to draw people's attention. Now, most of the time, I'm not interested in this because 
I, there's, there's pros and cons to having a bunch of sizzle on your videos. I prefer the steak, but to each their own. Feel free to experiment. But if you're making educational videos, this is going to be really important. If you're making like meme videos, stuff that's funny to watch, this really needs to be what you focus on, something that draws people's attention. I, it's probably pretty self-explanatory, but I figured I'd just say it anyway. I'll cover t uh, titles, thumbnails, and content here real quick. Now, the unfortunate part of, of how YouTube works is that probably using Pareto's principle, I wouldn't say it's 80%. I'd say it's probably 50 to 60% is dependent on the title and thumbnail because if you don't package stuff in a way that people want, that you draw their attention, want them to come in and consume it, then of course no one's going to come watch the video. But the thing is, and this is really true from educational content, if there's something you want to pursue, the content itself does need to be good. It needs to deliver on the title and thumbnail. So when you're thinking of all this stuff, there's a very fine line to walk between clickbait and not clickbait. Now, for the most part, if you look at my titles and thumbnails, in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and point some things out here. So this video right here, so I titled this video, What the Microsoft Hack Means for You. And you can look at this video here. I intentionally made this thumbnail where it looked like Bill Gates and Putin were looking at each other and and Bill Gates was pissed off that Putin had, was like kind of laughing at Bill Gates. And I had the Windows blue screen of death in the background. I knew when I made this title and thumbnail that this was going to get a lot of clicks. Now there's other times that I make stuff like channel and website updates. I'm like, okay, well this is something to update my audience. It's not gonna get a bunch of people to wanna watch it, but I don't really care because this is a video that I want to make. Now one thing that I will mention, your your thumbnails should always be worse than the video content itself. So if I were to make Mr. Beast style thumbnails for my videos, people would click onto the video, they'd bounce out within three seconds because they'd think, okay, well, this thumbnail, so Mr. Beast, for example, spends, I think it's about $150,000 on his thumbnails. Now you can't go and take a thumbnail like that and put it on a video of some guy that's talking and he's got notepad pulled up on his screen and he's screen recording with OBS because those two things do not match together. So your, your thumbnails should always be worse than the videos because otherwise, like I said, you create this, this expectation. You're not going to meet this expectation that people have when they click over to the video. Analytics, this is, man, this is a really important one because this is something that I see so many people get confused on. So one of the things is, I know there's a resource out there called the New Tubers Reddit. I strongly recommend people just avoid going on there. I see so many people going on there and talking about tip, tips and, and tactics and strategies. And when I go look at their channels, they've posted like two or three videos and they're talking about analytics and click-through rate and how they made a really clickbait, you know, how to make like these thumbnails that are really clickbait. And it's like, you've made three videos over the past four months and you are going in here trying to talk to people about things like click-through rate or view duration. You don't have enough practice. You don't have enough experience doing this kind of thing. Really until you have a solid 50 videos under your belt, you, you don't have enough data to work with. And the thing is that everyone's journey doing YouTube is very unique. And there's a lot of people that just, they, they spend so much time focusing on this. And I'm going to tell you right now, and, it, and it's not just me that says this, I've seen other people say this as well. I do not look at click-through rate. I do not look at view duration. I don't look at the likes and dislikes count. I don't look at any of that crap because none of it matters. What matters is that I make a good video and I cannot make a good video if I'm psychoanalyzing every single little, oh, someone clicked off. There's a few people that clicked off right here at this moment in the video. That might be helpful when you reach someone like Mr. Beast's level or someone like PewDiePie but it's not going to be applicable to someone with 10,000, 20,000. One of the things that I heard in one of the masterminds that I'm in is even someone that's at 50,000 subscribers, even then, they should be spending very little time, little time looking at analytics because it just doesn't matter that much. It's more important to spend that, you could spend two or three hours looking at all of the stuff that doesn't really matter, or you can spend that time preparing for your next video. And that's a trap that I see a lot of people fall into is they think that they need to spend all this time analyzing all this garbage that doesn't matter. I'm telling you, it doesn't. There's going to be people out there that'll try to argue this point with me. It does not matter. The thing is, and here's the other thing when it comes to using any sort of data to make any decisions. 
there's books out there, I, I can't remember the name of the book. I think it's Statistics Made Simple or something like that. One of the things that I strongly encourage people that are going to try and start YouTube or really a, if you wanna make it through life in general, one thing that will help you a lot is to understa understand statistics and probability. So here's what I mean by that. So let's say you're starting a YouTube channel, you've gone three days without having a new subscriber to your channel. The probability increases that on the next day you are going to get a new subscriber. Now let's take a quick example with statistics here. Let's say you want to try and analyze your click-through rate. If you have a thousand viewers on your video, your click-through rate, your view duration, none of that matters. 1,000 people out of the two or three billion people that use this platform every day, 1,000 people is not enough data to be able to work with. You really need to have solidly tens of thousands, but really I would say you need to have hundreds of thousands of views in order to be able to start getting an idea of where things are, are going, your, your click-through rate, your view duration, all of that. It's like I said, you're just focusing on the wrong thing. I'm not really gonna say any more about it. I know there's gonna be people that disagree with me on this, but this is a waste of time for the vast majority of people until you've made it. I would say if you're at 100,000 subscribers, sure, go ahead and do that. But otherwise, just focus on making good content. I, people are just focusing on the wrong shit. And when I take a look at that NewTuber subreddit, I don't go, I very rarely go on there. But when I do, I just, people are focusing on that and it's just, it's not helping anything. Next thing, so this is a really big thing that keeps a lot of people from getting started is they, they think that the haters, they come in and leave nasty comments. So, so things like haters, a lack of views, lack of likes, lack of subscribers, none of these are a reflection of you as a person. And I really recommend that people do not take these things personally. If you get 10 views on a video, it does not mean you're a bad person. It does not mean that you don't know what you're, you're talking about. It means that you're going through a grind that everyone else has to go through. It's not, it's not something that's unique to you. You just have to base, I don't know any other way to put this other than you just have to deal with it. There's no other simple way for me to word this. And as far as negative comments go, you're going to get people that come in and leave nasty comments. And it's up to you how you wanna deal with them going to give you a couple different perspectives here. First of all, you should never pick fights with people. The people that come in and leave hate comments, they want you to respond. They're trying to get a response out of you. If you just don't even entertain them, there's been a few times that I'll go and respond to someone and, and talk to them and respond to them like, yeah, you're, you're actually an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. There's been a few people in the last 10 months that I've been on here that have said some really stupid stuff, but most of the time I just don't even respond because that's what they want and it gives them a dopamine rush because it makes them feel better about themselves. Now the other aspect to this is if you are an industry professional of some sort, don't let someone come in and bait you and then you end up with a 20 or 30 reply chain with this person where you're arguing back and forth. You're not going to win a argument with stupid people because that's what a lot of these haters are. I've seen some of the comments that they leave, not only on my videos, but I've also seen them on other channels. Sometimes hate the hate comments can be justified, but a lot of times they're not. A lot of times they're just stupid shit. There's a big difference between leaving, between being a jackass and leaving constructive feedback. And 98% of the time, it's just someone that's being a jackass. But I would just say, don't even waste your time with negative comments. It is it is what it is. The, now, the one thing that I would say, if you're getting negative comments, I've seen some people go and turn off comments on a video. I think that's a really bad, in fact, I'm going to tell you that's a really bad idea. Just let it, things, people are so busy with all the stuff that they have going on. They're not worried about, at the end of the day, they don't really actually give a damn about that stuff. They're gonna move on to the next thing to go rage about. So don't get all worked up about it. It is what it is. Now, this was something that I put in here for the business executives that I made a version of this video for. If you're a meme channel or you wanna do some type of entertainment, I suppose this doesn't really apply as much, but if you're gonna make some sort of educational focused content or something that helps out people in a certain industry, you should care about the content that you're making. You should care about the people in the comment section. You should want to help people out. There's a big lack of that in the world right now, and it does not go unnoticed when you actually care about what is going on with other people and trying to help them out when you have time to do things. 
Next thing, develop your style. Here is what I mean by that. So if you go down here, so I've got all these recommended channels on my YouTube channel. So these are all the feature ones, so like Chris Ties Tech, Timothy Kane, Devin Nash. So when I say develop your style, what I mean is just come up with something that is unique to you that, and then this takes time. So just, if you're going to start out, you're, you're probably just going to start making simple videos. That's completely fine. They might look like pretty much everything that, or something that everyone else makes. And really there's nothing new under the sun at this point because there's so much stuff that gets uploaded to YouTube. Now, when it's so like my style, for example, so I just, for the most part, I have this, the, the webcam here from OBS and I use a notepad. And now I've only ever seen two other YouTubers use Notepad. And I thought, you know what, I'll adopt this because I like doing this. I do a lot of educational content that's really in depth. It helps people follow along. It makes sense for me to do it. This is just part of the style of my videos. And for a lot of people, it will take them time to get that stuff figured out. Next thing, figure out if you want to chase hot topics or be known for a bunch of editing or if you want to build a personality. These are not necessarily exclusive to one another, but there are times that, so for example, if you wanna be known for your personality, being able to communicate on a camera, then you probably don't want to be focusing nearly as much on doing meme editing or uh, retention editing is what it's called, where you're doing all of these weird cuts, so you got a camera here, a camera over here, it's switching every few seconds, and then it jumps over to some B-roll footage, that detracts, if, especially if you're going to make educational style content that's made with the intention of helping other people learn something, that does nothing but detract from the video. Now for a meme video, having a bunch of editing is probably going to be the way to go, but not for something where you wanna show off personality. Or do you wanna be known for doing some really fancy editing? Let me give you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. You can go check these videos out on your own time if you'd like to. So Adrian Caparzo is one example of a guy that does, his edits are absolutely incredible. Now, if you go watch these videos, so there's the Satac 22 trailer and then Eli 21. So these are really good videos to watch. Now, if you want to watch something that is just, the, the editing in this was unbelievably just insanely good. So it's made by this channel called Heat Blur Simulations. And it's this trailer here called Legends Never Die, the, DC, the F4E announcement trailer. And it's a, it's a video that's focusing around the F4E, which was a jet, a fighter jet that came out back during uh, sometime around the Vietnam War era. And the editing in that video was just, so the, those were just two examples. The editing in there is absolutely insane. And so I kind of, when I watch videos from those channels, is I think, okay, well, these channels do some really good editing, so I'm going to go check them out. Now the other thing, do you wanna be known for chasing hot topics? Now here's the thing, I could be going and chasing the latest clickbait stuff all the time on this channel. That's not what I want to be known for. Every now and then I'll do something where, so like I'll talk about, so I made a video quite a while back that did really well at the time when I had way less subscribers and it got way more views. I think I had like 500 subscribers and it got like 10X that amount and views was of the motherboard virus that had just been discovered. But I don't wanna be chasing hot topics all the time because I don't want to be known for constantly doing that. So again, it's just something to put some work into. Don't put too much focus into this at the start. Just start making videos. If you haven't got started or if you've only made a few videos, just get make more videos. And by the way, this is really good at building up a sizable audience. So like the Microsoft thing, for example, that was fresh news about the, why the, what the, the Microsoft hack video that I made. That was fresh news, it was a hot topic, and I gave people some alternatives to help protect themselves against the stuff that I talked about in that video. And I gained a lot of subscribers for making that video. But it's probably not something you wanna do all the time. Next thing, make, I, again, this is personal opinion, do what you want with your channel. Make something positive. We've got way too much negative bullshit that's out there in the world, and there's also some, some certain content types that are really dangerous areas to tread into. And that's anything where it's hate speech, clout chasing, rage baiting, personal attacks. Now I'm going to say this, if you, are, if you have a business focus or if you're an industry professional, you should absolutely not make this kind of content. Now, people might say, well, you've made videos talking about things like Microsoft and how they've screwed a few things up. Yes, that's true. 
that's some mild criticism, but I will not come out and make a video explicitly saying, oh, I can't stand Bill Gates. I think he's a piece of garbage. That would be completely off base for me to go make a video like that. Number one, I don't actually believe it because I just don't care. I've got my own thing going on. I'm not so wrapped up in someone else's life that I'm going to go and pay attention to every single thing that they're doing. But there's the other aspect of it that I just, I'm not going to make stuff like that because it, it presents a, it makes people think of you in a certain way that is very generally not good. I've seen quite a few YouTube channels that go down this route of doing one of these things. Now, here's the thing, if you're an industry professional or you are a business person, here's the other thing to keep in mind. I've came across a couple of channels just within the last couple of months where, and I'm not gonna pull them off for people to look at because I'm not gonna get involved in some pissing match with other YouTubers. But what I did is I noticed they were making videos and one of them made a video and it was the only video on this guy's channel, a small YouTuber, smaller than my channel. And he was calling out this business person who is very good at business and has done very well for themselves. They've been in business for a long time. This guy made this video talking garbage about them and they tagged them on YouTube. So they made this video tagged this other person so this person would get a mention notification. And they were just talking garbage the whole time. And I thought, and I looked at this and I thought, this is a person that I will never do business with because they think that it is acceptable for them to go call out other business people who do way better work than this person does, by the way. I, I was looking at some of their stuff and I thought, you know what? This person is so busy worried about other people and making hate content that they're not focused on improving themselves and getting themselves bettered. That, they, that you know, now they are going and trying to tear down somebody else. That is just pathetic, garbage content. Now, on the other aspect of this, let me cover the, the other set of things. If you are an entertainment channel and you want to make meme type videos or you're chasing trends, this is a very dangerous area to be playing in because I've seen plenty of, of channels where the audience will turn on the creator. This happens a lot more than people might think. There's some big channels. I'm sure some people could think of a couple of, of examples of channels with over a million subscribers who do nothing but post things like personal attacks on other people. And inevitably what happens is that audience turns on that person and they want that person to fail. And sometimes the audience will go so far as to try to accelerate the downfall of that person. It's a very dangerous area to be playing in. I don't recommend people do it. But again, it's up to you. If that's the path you want to take, it's, it's your choice. At the end of the day, I really don't give a damn what it is that people do because it's their life, not mine. The other thing I'm going to mention, this was for the business people, but I would also say this really applies to a lot of people in general. Politicians are not your friend. They're not going to fix anything. I really don't have anything good to say about politicians. And I don't talk about politics on my channel. This is not the place for people to come and learn about politics. I couldn't tell you all the, I, the like there's sometimes I'll go watch a video and I'll look at the comments and people are explaining a political ideology and they'll take five paragraphs to write it out. And I'm like, I didn't even understand any of what this person just said because I'm over here trying to focus on the problems that I have and improve my own standing with things. I'm not going to go and spend a bunch of time trying to campaign for somebody who really doesn't give a damn about me. So, you know, if you wanna play the politics game, that's fine, but there's a lot of people out there that are getting fed up with this kind of bullshit. And it's not something that I would really recommend people go and do, but again, you do you. Here's the thing, your community is a reflection of you as a person. Now this is putting aside the occasional troll that you're gonna have come in leaving a hate comment. But generally, if you have a good attitude and you make good content, your community, your, your subscribers, the people that leave comments are going to reflect that kind of video, reflect you as a person. Now it's a very fast, again, this was focused towards the industry professionals. This is a very fast way for you to burn your reputation. If you want to be known for business or you want to be known for IT or a, you're a doctor and you wanna make videos that are focused around medical subjects, if you're going to make content that falls into one of these categories, you're going to burn your reputation. And the thing is, when that spreads around and, and that's what people get to know you as, there's no going back on that because people will remember that, hey, this person goes out and makes it, they, they attack other people. Why would I wanna do business with this kind of person? At least that's the way that I've always looked at it. I think it's really poor optics.
for business people to be going and acting like that. Next thing you've really got to consume, I'll just cover this briefly, I've talked about this a little already, you really need to consume, you really need to watch videos on the platform because if you watch videos on the platform, so let's say you want to watch a video on using DaVinci Resolve to edit videos. You can go watch 10 different people make videos 10 different ways. You can go look at the comments through those 10 different videos and figure out, okay, here's what worked from this video, here's what worked from this video, here's what they said they didn't like about these videos. Okay, with that in mind, I'm going to craft the video that I want to make talking about this feature, whatever feature in DaVinci Resolve. So you need to be on the platform to learn how it works. I have seen some people, and again, I could pull up examples because I track data, but I'm not going to because I'm not, I don't want it to seem like a personal attack, but I keep an archive of things of not to do. And what I will see, this is really common with business people is they think, oh, well, YouTube is just another marketing platform. I'm just gonna spam out a bunch of garbage generic videos. And then they go and do that and they get like two views a video and they've made sometimes a thousand plus videos. And it's like, People can tell that you are trying to just get customers when you're making these videos, and they have absolutely no idea how the platform works because I can tell that they never watch videos on the platform. Again, just consume on the platform and you'll learn what works. 80-20 rule, Pareto's principle. A lot of what you're gonna focus on doesn't actually matter. The 80%, the 20% the of the work will get you 80% of the results. You don't need to be making Mr. Beast style thumbnails in order to get a video that does well. Now, it depends on your intentions, and I'll, I can cover the, the nuances of that here in just a little bit, but people are focusing on the wrong things. Next thing, put yourself in the shoes of the audience. So here's what I mean by that. So I was watching a business video. This was about six months back at this point. They made business style, they, well, they still do make business style content. But I watched a video and they had hired a new video and were making this new style of video when I clicked on this video and I was watching it. And so like I said, this came back to know what type of video is going to work with your audience. Now this was a business person. So they had videos where they, can't, they had a camera here, camera over here, and what was happening was every two to three seconds, they were doing this retention style editing where it would switch frames and then they were also, bring in generic B-roll footage, which for the vast majority of people, you should avoid B generic B-roll footage. It's just a bunch of garbage. People know it's generic. It detracts from the video. It lowers the quality. Just avoid that kind of garbage. It doesn't improve the, the, the video, the experience. And then the editor, so text would, they, they had subtitles that were constantly flashing and then they move off screen. And every time something would come on screen is it would make a whoosh sound and it would whoosh off. And then about every three minutes, there was a notification thing or a, a subscribe, and or subscribe and turn on notifications button that would pop up and there'd be dings, there'd be the whoosh sound to bring it on screen. And people were pissed off with this guy because he said, they were basically like, this editing is absolute garbage. Why did you put this video out there? What makes you think that your audience would want to watch this? This was a channel full of business professionals they did not want to watch something that was made for 12 year olds watching TikTok. Again, you have to know your audience. Make videos in a way that you would want to watch. Now I make extraordinarily long videos compared to most people. I make videos, th this video is gonna be about two hours long and I'm talking and I've got notepad pulled up, but I have watched many, many videos that are similar in style to this, where it's just a lot of information that's being presented in a simple way because I know this is what I wanna watch. I know that it's what a lot of other people want to watch because they don't want that TikTok style garbage. I've covered this a little already, so I'm not gonna cover this much more. Some tactics are a waste of time and they distract you from what's important, which is the content itself. You need to spend time focusing on making a good video. You cannot do that if, you're, if you post a video, you're, you've posted 10 videos on your channel and you're looking at the average view duration, you're looking to see where people are dropping off. That's not going to help you make your next video you need to be focusing on the next video because it's a matter of putting in the reps this stuff again people will really focus on the, the wrong stuff consistency is critical there's a couple different points on this one. First of all if you commit to something and you're consistent with it it helps you out it helps get you in a better mind uh, better mindset because if you make the commitment that you're going to post videos on let's say Monday and Friday which is what I did for quite a while let's post videos on Monday Friday there were a couple of times like New Year's and Christmas fell on those, those two 
I think they were both Mondays and I, I didn't, I could have had something ready ahead of time and I didn't, I had other stuff going on. I was like, you know what? I made the commitment to do it. I'm going to upload anyway. There's a couple of times where I was really, really sick and I still made the videos. I made, uploaded them anyway, because I made the commitment and I was go not going to damage my consistency by not posting videos. Now, the other aspect of that is because there's this thing called a consistency bias. It's one of the human, the, one of the cognitive biases, which I recommend people go and study. Can, the consistency bias is one of those. You are going to lose people's, let's say you tell your audience, hey, every single Monday, I will have a video uploaded. Now, if you wanna take a Monday off here and there, that's fine. Make sure you communicate that to your audience. But what I've seen a lot of people do is they will just start skipping and then they'll disappear for three weeks and they'll come back for two weeks and then disappear for two months. Doing that is not a good look. It, it almost always penalizes, the, the algorithm's gonna penalize people like that because it seems like the, the algorithm wants people uploading stuff or people's channels will just fall off. There's, there's plenty of channels that I've studied where they will upload stuff and then they just stop and then the, the views just almost instantly die off and then they start losing subscribers. It's just how the game is played. And I know this is cliche, something cliche to mention, but you really do need to be consistent on this platform. Next thing, there's gonna be some people that say this is not a real job. Now for me, this is not, I guess for me at this point, it is a part-time job because I'm spending a lot of time on here. I get paid to make YouTube videos now through AdSense. It's not much money, not enough by any means to cover bills or anything like that. But hey, I would say it's considered a job. But the thing is, is let's say you wanna do this full time. There's plenty of people that get paid to do this full time, but a lot of people will stop, stop themselves from making videos because they think, well, what are other people going to think of me when I start making YouTube videos? Just disregard them because the people that are gonna talk garbage on you have no idea how much work and effort actually goes into this. Even if you just want to make videos part-time, there is a lot of work. There's a lot of verticals that you need to know. There's, so you need to know how to make thumbnails and you know how to edit videos and you know how to talk on camera, you know how to set up technology. You need to know your subject matter. There is a lot of verticals that go into making videos and that's something that most people will just never understand. Don't take advice from somebody who is not in the game. I am in the game, which is why I talk about this stuff, but I would never, if I was never on YouTube, I would not go tell people how to make YouTube videos because that would be stupid. I would have no idea of what it takes to go and make actually make a video. Now, the other thing we're gonna mention here real quick on this point, because this is kind of like the other aspect of it, is, is people that will stop themselves or they let someone else talk them out of it. This was a terribly worded article from Yahoo Finance saying that Mr. Beast is, is painful watching wannabe YouTubers quit school. I got a couple of things to mention here. First of all, this is not, he did not use the word wannabe. This makes, this demeans people that want to do this. And I think that this was absolute bullshit for whoever wrote this article at Yahoo to use this word right here. Mr. Beast did not say this. What Mr. Beast said was, it's painful to see people quit their job slash drop out of school to make content full time before they're ready. Key emphasis on these three words right here. For every person like me that makes it, thousands don't. Keep that in mind and be smart, please. Now there's a lot of truth to this statement. Like I mentioned, this game is hard, takes a lot of work. It's just the way that it is. It should not stop you from getting started. You will not know whether or not this works for you until you have got started and you have had a while playing the game. Really, I would say you need to make 100 videos before you can definitively say whether or not making videos is for you. And for me, I could tell, I think it was about video 30 or video 40, I really knew that for me, making videos was something that I needed to be doing. It's just something that I like doing. It, there's, there's a lot of things to it. Part of it is it's almost therapeutic for me to be able to make these videos because I like doing this kind of stuff. But for some people, it just it, that's not the case, but you won't know unless you try it. But this is good advice. Don't go and, and drop out of school or quit if you're not ready to go full time. You need to have things properly set up. So in, if you want to do this full time, that means you need to have your you need to have some sponsorships set up. You need to have a good solid viewer base, all that kind of stuff. 
But for me, this is not a full-time job. So I approach things a little bit differently with YouTube, but don't let, don't let people try and give you this bullshit here because there's a lot of work that goes into this. I've already mentioned this. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mention this a lot. Writing is, this is really underrated and I, I really am not exaggerating this. So I am not kidding when I say I have a, a bunch of these notepads and I keep pens by keep pens and notepads by my desk. So when I'm working, if I think of something, I can just write it down really fast. You should do that anyway, because some of your best stuff is fleeting. I've had plenty of good ideas that have been lost to time because I didn't write them down right away. But here's the other thing. And here's the reason why I have two years of video content planned out right now, which might sound like a lot to a people when some people struggle with ideas coming up for videos. Here's what I mean when I say that is I will take one or two hours to have dedicated writing sessions. Now this is not just for making videos. I have other work that needs to be done and this helps me with my work. It also helps me get my thoughts out on a paper so I can kind of get a better direction of where things are going. But when I say writing really helps, here's an example of content ideas that I came up with from a session of sitting down and writing. So this was just one aspect, which is web design or making websites. So di the different topics that I came up with were SEO, Ahrefs, Framer, WordPress, Webflow, Hugo, MK Docs, Analytics, Color Psychology, Landing Pages, text like font, ch font choices, design like designing the website, layout, photos, video, using the tonality, so like copywriting. And then you can break that down even further. So SEO, I could make videos talking about things like backlinks or doing keyword research. So just me taking some one or two hour writing sessions in a one hour writing session, if I really want to, I can come up with months worth of content. And in fact, actually I've got more than two years of video content planned out at this point. Uh, realistically, I've got probably four to five years of video content planned out. And it's because I take writing so seriously and I, in it, like I said, writing is going to help you more. If you've never done writing before, it will help you more than you could ever think that it would as long as you take it seriously. You need to sit down, have these dedicated blocks, not have videos playing in the background, not be watching TikToks on TV or something like that. Just turn on, if you need to, you need to, you can turn on like some deep work music that doesn't have lyrics or anything like that, but you need to just sit down and write. And you can either do that inside of your second brain or you can put it down on paper, whatever works for you. But it is the best thing that you can do to come up with ideas for new videos. Next thing, this is a very long-term game. Like I said, I already have years worth of content planned out. I'm not, I didn't come on here with the intention of making videos for two months, seeing where I was going to be with things and then just saying, ah, you know what, I've been on here two months. I don't know that this is gonna be for me. I'm just gonna quit. This is a very long-term game. I'll, honestly, I'm probably gonna be making videos for the next 20 to 30 years if YouTube is around that long. I could be even making videos for 40 years, who knows? I'm going to be here for a very long time. I did not come on here with the intention of just quitting after six months. Next thing, the 1K subscribers mark. Once you make it to 1K, things you, it's like this pressure is going to be lifted off of you because for a lot of people as they attach their self-worth and when people see that 1K, I think there's something that it changes a, a mindset for a lot of people of, okay, I've got a thousand subscribers now. I think it kind of lifts a big weight for a lot of people. The other aspect to this that's really important, and I, this is before I started using a second brain, so I, I've tried searching for this channel, it's lost with time, I can't find, I don't remember the name of the, the video. There's an art teacher on YouTube with about 200,000 subscribers, and maybe someone watching this video will know who I'm talking about and link the video. She was talking about how YouTube was restricting her content, and it just wasn't getting much reach, and she, I don't know why, but she did not have her content monetized. So she was not running any sort of ads. Now the thing with this, and I know people hate ads. I do too. I don't watch, I haven't watched ads in a very long time. I cannot use the internet without a blocker. But she was showing the analytics for her videos and when this stuff started happening, I've also seen this come up on other people's videos as well, that if you do not have monetization on, your videos will not get as much reach as videos that have ads turned on. And so if you turn off ads, your videos are, and, and it makes sense because it costs a lot of money to store huge video files. Some of the video files that I upload are massive. Costs a lot of time and a lot of money to be able to upload this stuff and then show this content to all these people. 
And the the line of thinking there from the YouTube execs that I'm this would be my guess is that they think, okay, well, why would we push out and recommend videos that we can't make money on? So the thing with that is when it comes to ads, you could just do a pre-roll if you don't want to annoy people with ads. I usually just do a pre-roll. Sometimes I'll do one or two mid-rolls, but pre-roll is usually fine. I don't want this channel to be a full-time channel. I don't want to upload like five videos a week, but nevertheless, this is a really important mark to get to because when you can turn on monetization, I noticed like the, the time that it took me, my, the, the videos, the type of videos that I make and the quality of my videos really haven't changed much in the last couple of months. And when we go back and look at my channel here, this was just two months ago that I was at a thousand subscribers. I've grown more in the last two months than I did in the prior, than I did from here and the eight months prior to that. And my guess is a good portion of that, I mean, obviously there was the content aspect of it, of making videos that people wanna watch and experimenting with some sizzle on, on the steak, but also a portion of that is it's like, well, now I can run ads on my videos. So there's that. Next thing, every single person's journey on YouTube is gonna be unique. There, there, there's so many different ways that no one person is going to look like someone else. Don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 10. If you start comparing yourself to other people, then it's going to tear you down. When I look at other channels, I'm looking at it from the aspect of, what do they know that I don't know and what's working for them that I'm not doing? Is it something that maybe I could integrate on my channel? Would it make sense for me to do this? But what I'm not doing is I'm not going to these other channels and comparing because again, that's a, a terrible idea. Next thing, don't worry about copying an idea. You have something, you have unique experience to add. There, again, there's nothing new under the sun. I'll give you an example. So DaVinci Studio, when I was learning how to use the, the DaVinci video editor, there were times when I would need to learn how to use a feature and I would watch a video and I was like, okay, well, this doesn't quite make sense. And I go watch it, another video on the same topic by a different person. They explain it in a way that all of a sudden it made sense to me. And it's been that way with so many other things. And so you have something unique that is going to make the idea unique to you. That's going to help people learn something. So this like, if you're making educational content, by the way, you have unique experiences to add I see so many people that think, well, I don't wanna copy anyone. Okay, well, you're gonna get left behind and you're never going to do something because you're worried about other people's perception of you. Like, imitation is just a thing. It's been a thing for the beginning of time. People imitate other people. It's just how we learn. It's how we improve. It's don't worry about copying. Don't worry about, okay, well, this person talked about how to make windows faster. So therefore I cannot do that. No, you have your own experiences and it will make the video unique. Next thing, I strongly recommend this, review all of your work. I, there are some people that will just post videos raw. The thing with that is if you want to get better at this, one of the fastest, this was the way that I improved the fastest on YouTube. There's a lot of people that I've seen that will leave a comment saying, hey, I don't like listening to the sound of my own voice or seeing myself on video. You have to do it though, because if you review all of your work, it's like watching a sports team. Sports teams watch playbacks of their, their the stuff that they're doing for their games. That's what makes them better. If they did not do playbacks, then they would not learn how to get better at the game. Well, they, they get better at the game, but it would take them longer. I go, every single video that I post on this channel publicly, I don't do this with private videos, but I do it with everything that's posted publicly. I go back and I watch every single second when I'm going and editing the video because I'm like, okay, well, did I word, did I phrase this clearly? Did I word, did I get all my thoughts organized correctly? Okay, what do I need to improve for the next video? This has been one of the greatest things that I've done that's been gotten me to improve my ability to speak on video, communicate my ideas, is for me to go back and watch all of my stuff because then I can see, okay, well, Here's some things that I keep saying. In this video, I, I said the same thing twice. I, so therefore in the next video, I need to filter that stuff out. This is something that will help you out a lot. Next thing, it's normal to, I know there's a lot of people that are self-conscious about how they look or sound. First of all, it gets easier as time goes on, as you get more practice, you think less about it, but it's normal. Like there's still times where I'll think, okay, well, is my microphone good? Like I'll do checks, I'll do a test file a test video ahead of time to make sure that the audio sounds good. I'll make sure that the video looks good. I'll make sure the lighting is set up right. That's normal. Don't, don't be worried about using, don't be worried too much about the self-consciousness thing. 
It's always going to be there, but as you do it more, it'll kind of go away. The next thing, using feedback can be good, but use caution when you are taking feedback from people. So first of all, I mentioned earlier, don't... So when it comes to the process of making videos itself, let's say video editing or making thumbnails, do not take advice from people who are not in the game. That's something that's really important because otherwise you'll, you'll hear someone tell you something and you're like, okay, well, let's say I had never made a video before. I cannot go tell someone else what makes, I could give it kind of from the aspect of a viewer. I can't tell someone, hey, here's the best way to make a video when I, if I had never made one myself. It just, it doesn't make sense. Now, the other thing is you're going to get some feedback that is just not going to be helpful. So don't, so what I mean by that is, is let's say, so I'll give you some examples here. So I had one person, I've had a few people come on and get butt hurt. There is a, so on the Microsoft video, for example, I don't, this person might've, must've been like 20 years old. They said, oh, you should write a script. They didn't like that I was using notepad for my video. And it's like, okay, I, I'm not, that comment went like straight in the garbage mentally because I thought I'm not going to do that because it's going to detract from my videos because I pack so much information in. If they can't pay attention and they can't watch a video that doesn't have a bunch of retention editing, that's their issue, not mine. Click off my video and go watch someone else. I'm not going to go change something. Now, the problem that I see with this is, is some people will go and look at these, these comments, and this is a dangerous trap that small YouTubers can fall into. You've got 20 subscribers, someone comes in and leaves a comment saying they don't like something on your video, but maybe you've watched enough videos that you're like, okay, I like this style, but then, oh, one person comes in and complains about it, I've got to change everything. That's not what I'm saying. So that's why I'm saying fee feedback cannot, there are times that it's not good. Now there are times that it can be good. I'll give you another example here of sometimes where if you're going to use it, you should really do a deep dive and determine if it would be good. So I've had a few videos now where people have said that, hey, you use a lot of profanity, you should probably dial back because it's, it, it takes away from the professional aspect of your videos. And normally I would have just kind of just not paid it any attention. And I don't use a lot of profanity anyway. Sometimes I'll use one or two F-bombs in a video, but it's, it's pretty rare. But I started thinking about it. So I know my analytics. So something like 70%, 65, 70% of my channel is 45 plus. Now, and I started thinking about that. And I thought, okay, well, about 30% of people watch me on TV. So if they're, let's say someone is watching me on TV, there's a good chance that there could be grandkids in the house and they don't want to have something playing where someone's gonna be using F-bombs. And I thought, okay, and I'm also making videos that are kind of aimed more towards, sometimes aimed more towards industry professionals. And I thought, okay, that's a good point. I should dial back on the profanity. And I, in fact, I haven't actually even used any F-bombs since I had those videos come up and I was getting all those comments about that. And it's not that I'm not willing to use F-bombs, I'd still be fine with it, but I, I, I thought about it and I thought, you know what, given all of the circumstance, given the, the surrounding circumstances to all of this, it's probably best that I don't do that. So it is what it is. Next thing, you don't have to use video. Writing and, and photos are still crushing. If you do wanna be a content creator, but you're just, you, cannot overcome the mental blocks of making a video. Writing in photos still do really good, but I still strongly recommend making video. It's, it's most of the platforms now are starting to favor this, like Instagram Reels. I think Facebook calls, also calls them Reels. TikTok, Twitter is starting to put more of an emphasis on video, even long form video, interestingly. And there's also the fact that it just, so the thing is, so like I'll go and browse through Twitter briefly. I don't spend much time on there. But the thing is like, I'll go watch or I'll go look at some of these tweets, but I don't really know these people. I've never seen, I don't know what they look like. I've never seen them on video. Some of them just have like a generic profile picture that's not actually of them. So I have no idea what they look like. I don't really have any idea of how they think about things because with video, you can convey yourself in a way that you cannot do with a photo or with writing. So I strongly encourage people I'm very bullish on video and there's a reason for that. I have a lot of conviction that video is just the way to go with things. But again, do you do you. If you just can't overcome that block, you wanna make content, but you're just not, you, you just can't get yourself to make videos, then you could just start out with writing or using photos for the time being and then transition over into video later on. So just something to think about.
Next thing, editing can be used to improve a video, but it cannot, it shouldn't be used as, as a crutch and the vast majority of the time it cannot be used as a crutch. So if you're making educational content, if you have bad, if the video content itself is bad, if you're, if you have to do edit out tons of things that you're saying because you're, you're, you're fumbling through your words, for example, editing cannot fix that. The other thing is if you just cannot communicate well on video, editing can help that a little bit. You can do a color grade, you can do some film grain, you can do some B-roll footage that you filmed. It can improve a video, but it's not, it's not going, if it's, if a video is just completely unwatchable, editing is not going to all of a sudden make it watchable. It should only be used to improve things. It should not be used as a crutch. I've already covered this, so I'm not, I'm not going to come back to that one. Just creating content is going to bring you opportunity. I have, so I've turned down sponsorships. I, it's not that I'm not willing to take a sponsorship and there's a chance that I might at some point. It's just that the sponsorships that were coming along, I didn't think would fit well with the channel that I'm trying to build. Maybe at some point I will take a sponsorship, but for the, here's the thing. I've never reached out to these people. I've never asked them, Hey, will you give me money and I'll talk about your stuff. They have literally came to me and offered me money in exchange for making something promoting their stuff. So just by making content, now if you're making meme videos and you're just making funny stuff, you, you might not, you know, if you're making gaming content, then yeah, you can get sponsorships. If you're just making meme videos, you might not really get much, if any opportunity. But if you're making educational content, just the process of you making videos and having some people watching your channel, you're going to get opportunities that come your way to make money and grow your channel and network, all that kind of stuff. I, this is why I'm so bullish on making videos is because there's, it's a lot, there's a lot of power to this stuff. Now, value always beats showing off. Here's what I mean by that. So this is, again, this was something more towards the business, the, the executives that I was making this video for originally was something that I will see from some people on YouTube is they will go show off the Lambos and the Rolexes and the $10 million penthouses. That is just showing off and a lot of people really don't like that. It's not delivering any sort of value. You're not improving anyone's life in any way. It, a lot of times it's not really not even entertaining to see someone, oh, I got this new Lamborghini here. Okay, and I don't have an issue with people wanting to buy a penthouse or buy a Lambo or anything like that. If that's something that, if you have the money to do that and you wanna do that, go right ahead, I don't care. But it does not create any sort of value. And if you want to focus on creating value, that will always be going in, in showing off and in trying to one up other people. I just, I don't, I think there's a lot of this on YouTube and a lot of this on social media. And all it does is make people feel bad about themselves. And that a lot of times when I watch those people, I just, some of them are so disconnected from reality, from what most people have to go through in day-to-day -day life. And I think it pisses a lot of people off. And it's, it's kind of annoying to me as well, because it's like, Okay, these people don't know what it is to struggle because they were born with a trust fund. They've had a silver spin up their asshole their entire life. I, that is this just something I would recommend avoiding? Again, you do you. Next thing, I made a video talking about this already. It was a few videos back talking about, it's titled Making Videos is Hard. If you haven't watched it, this is explored really in depth in that one, but I'll just explain this briefly. People are willing to walk across broken glass to become a YouTuber or some other sort, of, make a name for themselves on social media. And so when they see someone who's a millionaire, they have 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 subscribers, this person's got a million dollars in the bank account and they go and make videos complaining about having to make videos and oh, it's so hard. I've got to sit down and come up with video ideas and this and that. People do not want to hear about that and it makes them resent that person. This is something, so when you're making videos, you should not complain about making videos. Yes, it's, it's difficult, but at the end of the day, you're getting paid to do something that most people could only dream of doing and they don't want to hear someone whine and complain and bitch about how, how hard it is to make videos when that person's going out and having to work a manual labor job. Next thing, this for the people that are worried about, you know, I've got zero subscribers, I feel bad about it, I don't wanna start a channel because I'm gonna have to start from zero. It's not about being early, it's about being better. Now, first of all, there's a lot of room for new people because people are constantly, there's been a huge wave of big YouTubers that are just retiring. 
because they just want to move on to other stuff and more power to them. Some are also dialing their schedules way back. And so what does that do? That creates opportunity for other people to take their place. Now, the other thing is it's not about being early. It's about being better. You can have your channel grow at literally any time. I've came in, people would say YouTube is extremely saturated. There, I'm sure there's plenty of people there I could go talk to that would say, oh, well, it'd be impossible to get to a thousand subscribers. Well, I expected that that was going to take me a year to do that. Here I am at 10 months and I'm about to hit 8,000. So there's that aspect of it. The other thing to keep in mind is people are just preferring user-generated content. There are a lot of times now where I will prefer watching if normally where I would watch a, a movie where now I'm just watching like, let's say a podcast or some sort of a YouTube documentary or something that I'm watching that in place of TV. YouTube is becoming the new TV now, and I'll get more into that here pretty soon. People prefer stuff that's made by other people that is just like authentic content. So there's plenty of room for you to make videos. Next thing, you are the niche. There's so many people that get hung up and they think they have to talk about one specific thing. Like some people might, so in my case, I could come in with the assumption, well, I have to talk about cybersecurity all the time because that's mostly what I talk about on my channel. But it's not all I talk about and I've made other videos that have done very well. I've made some website design videos. The MK Docs video that I made is one of my best performing videos on this channel. And I was going through all the, the details of setting up a MK Docs, setting up the GitHub repo, and doing markdown edits and changing config files because I'm not making a niche around cybersecurity. I am the niche. I'm making the niche around my specific interests, which I think a lot of people are losing interest in this. Now you might need to approach this a bit differently if you're going to make a business out of a YouTube channel. Maybe you do need to focus on one or two specific things, but for most people, just make it around your interests. Now, I do think a general theme is good. The general theme, and I don't think I've strayed away from this, at least so far, that everything on this channel has been tech focused in some way or another. But people get, they're like, oh, well, I have to do this hyper niche thing. And I always, I'm always going to be stuck here. No. And, and the thing that I've heard from other people, and I've tried this myself every now and then, is about every third video to do something that's different, that's not like strictly focused on what you mainly talk about. Next thing, I'm gonna give two different perspectives here because there is some nuance. And I'm going to say some stuff that's gonna get people heated because it is what it is, it's just the, the matter of this topic. So the first thing that I'll say is there's a lot of people that will say, oh, well, I got shadow banned. And so here's an example. So I went to this one guy, I used to watch his, a few videos from this one guy, and it was one of those people that has never bothered to improve their channel. And I went to look at his videos because he was talking about how he's shadow banned. And then he also went and opened up a new channel, which was completely unnecessary. His views were doing, they were actually doing okay. But when I watched his videos, his audio sucked ass. He didn't have his material prepared and he did no editing. So there'd be times where there'd be like a 10 or 15 second dead zone where there was nothing going on. It's like, well, learn how to edit your damn videos because people don't want to sit through 15 seconds of dead air. And then the other thing, so his camera, so his microphone sucked, his, his camera sucked ass too. He was uploading in 720, but even then it was still super, super blurry. And it's like, we're, we're not in 2005 anymore. Get a better camera. Like you want to do this as a full-time opportunity than have a decent setup. Now, the thing is you can make, you can use a crappy cell phone camera and get a ton of views. There was a lot of other issues going on with this person's channel. It wasn't just that, but I could tell just from looking at that stuff that they were not serious about taking YouTube seriously. And they were just trying to blame what was going on with their channel on someone else. Now, let me cover the other aspect to this because I realize there's some nuance to this. Does shadow banning happen? I think we've seen some examples. I'm not, again, I'm not a political person. This is not, I'm not going to talk about politics, but there are people who have given, there's been plenty of stuff that's came out where there's a strong case to be made that shadow banning does exist. But I've also seen some people with some really, some pretty, some pretty hot take videos where just about every one of their videos is really venturing into some interesting territory. And they still have a ton of subscribers. They get a lot of views. Their channel is growing just fine. So am I saying that it cannot happen? No, I, I do think that maybe every now and then it does happen. But I think people really have to venture out into some bad territory for it to happen. Most of the time, 
when I see someone saying this is what it really is, is people that just suck at making videos and they don't want to get better and they would rather blame outside circumstances for their lack of improvement. And then last thing here, and then we've, I'll just go through some miscellaneous stuff here. Be careful about having, having a lack of gratitude. I see this a lot these days where, and especially on YouTube or social media in general is, and especially the people that are starting out smaller, I've seen this on the YouTuber subreddit where people will go and complain and they're like, oh, well, I'm only getting 10 views on each of my videos, or I used to get 10,000 views and now I'm only getting 5,000. It's like, okay, well, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Maybe you've switched topics to something else that just, or something happened and now you're just not getting as much views. But there's a serious lack of gratitude there that these platforms are free and this is really a great equalizer. This is giving people a chance to do things that never was possible ever in the history of humanity before, where someone could come in with bad circumstances, turn things around, open up a bunch of opportunities for themselves and completely change their life. I see so much lack of gratitude. And when I see posts that people are making saying, or videos from people of making that they're complaining that, oh, I don't get as much attention as I used to. It's like, this is all free. If you go back and, and take a look, or if you, you could call, radio stations, for example, and just ask them, oh, how much does it cost to run ads? You could act like you're calling ads, you, you wanna run ads for a business, and they'll tell you, and for a small radio station, the, the least you're gonna be able to pay is like a couple thousand dollars a month. And if it's a big radio station, if there's, let's say, 50,000 people that listen to it on a regular basis, you're gonna be looking at five to $10,000 a month just to have a few ads running, where most people will just switch the radio, and most people know that, but it costs a lot of money. This is completely free, and I don't understand why there's such a lack of gratitude from the people that complain about this. Oh, well, I'm not getting the views that I want. I'm not getting the subscribers that I want. It's free. Holy shit. I don't know why we've got this, this problem in, in society where people just, there's a lack of gratitude for everything these days, just in general, it seems like. But anyway, I'm going to move past that. We've got some more stuff here, and I'm going to start wrapping this up because this video has gone super long already. Now I'm gonna say this, YouTube, I've studied a lot about these social media platforms. I've done paid advertisements. I've been on the platforms for a long time. I've studied a lot of these. I'm going to tell you right now, YouTube is by far the best platform that is out there. It's the hardest because making videos is harder than doing, than writing something because you have to develop all of these skills to be able to talk on video. Now I know some people bring up the writing thing. Oh, you said writing is the most pure form of communication. Yes, I do believe that, I really do think that. But making videos is just, there's something about videos that you cannot do with audio, pictures, or text. YouTube is the hardest platform to make it on. But if you can make it on here, I'm telling you, I've seen so many people do, just absolutely change their lives and turn things around just for making YouTube videos. And it comes in a whole bunch of different ways. It can be any industry, it could be someone that wants to make entertainment, or someone that wants to build a business focused around in some specific niche can be on anything. Long form and short form all do very well on the platform. Posts are really powerful. Now this was something that came from one of the masterminds that I'm in that posts are really, do, they're performing really well and I would have never expected this. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, okay, well I gotta put this in a play because I wanna see this for myself. And I just, I got instant results from using community posts. So I do a once a day community post and most of the time I just cross post it to Twitter as well. Twitter, Twitter's a different game, but I'm not gonna talk about that. But community posts, even if you have 10 subscribers, I think that it would help you out a lot. And it, like I said, it's also going to hold you accountable to writing daily because when you have, even if it's just a few sentences, because for some people you just need to get started. And I get that. But even just putting out a few sentences a day, if nothing else, it's getting you closer towards getting better. Now, it's evergreen content, that's something that's searchable in evergreen. So the MK Docs material website tutorial video that I made, that's an evergreen video that's going to get views for a long time to come. The video about the Microsoft hack was good for short-term suggested content on the homepage, but the views on that sharply dropped off. They're getting, I'm getting almost no views on that now because it's old news. It was a, it was a piece of news and now people have moved on from it. Both types of content do well, you should do both, but definitely don't leave out Evergreen. If you wanna make educational videos, Evergreen is going to be a very strong way for you to build a good platform. 
or build uh, build a good community. Birdie talked about this. Videos are their own island now, so like I was saying, don't worry so much about niche. You know, I'm not focused on making strictly cybersecurity videos. I'll make whatever I damn well please because it's just the platform. It's called social media. It's not called, hey, I'm a corporation and I need to come on here and just talk about one thing. Some people might want that from a channel, but you know what, I'm gonna make videos about what I want to talk about or the, it's going to no longer really be fun and then that's gonna show through the videos. The discovery algorithm on this platform is absolutely insane. So let me go back to earlier where I was talking about some people are focusing on the wrong thing with building a YouTube channel. So one of the things I'll see talk about is, oh, well you need to spend an hour a day going watching other people's videos and then go leave a comment talking about things in those videos that you really like. Can that help? Yes. Does it help? Maybe. What's my opinion on it? It probably helps very little. I have done absolutely zero of that. I make a video, I put it, I edit it, I put it out, and as soon as I post it, I'm on to the next thing, working on the next video. I don't get hung up on one thing because the thing is the YouTube algorithm will push your video out to people that want to watch it. And as you get better, you are going to get more people that watch your videos. It's the, the discovery algorithm here is just insanely good. Now this, you should also be using the platform to improve your results. So here's, here's another example of, so here's something that I mean by that specifically. So YouTube is the new TV. There's no way around saying this, that YouTube is going to take over TV at some point. Like TV is pretty much dying off. TV is gonna become like radio. There will always be those watching TV, like the traditional, you have cable TV, but it is going away very quickly. And YouTube is the thing that's really replacing it because you can find just about anything that you want to on YouTube outside of some movies and things like that. But even YouTube posts a lot of free movies that you can watch on their official channel. So even then you can use it to watch movies. Now, 45% of people that watch YouTube are watching from a TV. And this number has increased 80% since 2019. And I was curious about this, so I went back and looked at my analytics. Now, just over 30% of the people who watch my channel watch from a TV. Now the vast majority of my videos are focused around PC stuff, like how to set up Configure Defender or how to set up this firewall, or here's how to set up a website. Interestingly enough, people that watch from TVs, this is on my channel anyway, people that watch from TVs watch longer than people from desktops and the people from desktops obviously watch longer than people from mobile devices. And I also get a lot of people that will watch things like my web design videos and they will watch from a TV and they watch longer than someone that watches from a desktop. So when I was, so when I say use the platform to get better results, now I'm starting to think a lot more about how can I improve the experience for people that are watching from a TV or watching from a desktop. I do not focus on mobile at all. I know that mobile is a big sizable chunk, but the way you make videos for people watching from a TV, there's gonna be some differences from mobile. And so that's what I'm focusing on because I'm like, well, the stuff that I make is geared towards people that are going to be using a computer at some point. So if you, let's say you wanted to focus strictly on making stuff that had a TV for a TV audience. Now you're gonna pull in people from desktop and mobile, but considering that ha almost half the audience is now watching from TVs, that's a pretty big, that's, that's a pretty big factor to take into consideration. And so when I also said having TV helps with channel growth, there's something, so when you watch subsequent videos, one or two subsequent videos from the same person, you'll notice YouTube recommended, will recommend you even more of that, both on the recommended videos for that page and then also on the home page. Now also the longer that you engage with the channel, so the longer you're watching videos, the more likely YouTube is going to recommend you videos from that person in the future. Now, TV has better watch time than the other than from desktop or mobile. So if you get a lot of TV viewers, that's going to help you with channel growth. And then these were just some random stats that I pulled from some, some creators that were talking about this, is that as far as the watch time on TV audiences for their videos, that some had seen like 172% specifically and some were over 400%. So. And I've noticed like some pretty big differences between the viewer view duration of the people that watch my videos from a TV versus desktop. And by the way, I know people are gonna bring up the analytics thing because I talked about that earlier. That's the only time that I've really ever gone back and in depth looked at analytics was to look at the TV aspect of it. Because again, I don't pay attention to click through rate or watch time or any of that. 
Next thing, I'm gonna cover some, some studio setup stuff real quick. All you really need is a phone mount or a tripod. You'll need a USB cable. You'll need a phone or a webcam, something like the Elgato face cam works just fine. I believe this records in 4K or it might be the face cam pro. And then just a simple microphone. So like a Blue Yeti, Elgato Wave, there's lav mics, there's shotgun mics like the Rode video mic. All of them sound differently. So just make sure you watch videos to make sure that it's going to sound the way that you want it to sound. I'm going to say this, this little wireless DJI mic that I had, it took a lot of effort for me to get this dialed in to make it sound halfway good. And it still doesn't sound as good as something like the Shure SM7B. But I wanted something that was portable. And so if I had to go do it over again, I probably would have bought the Shure mic. I'll just say that right now. Because this thing's been kind of a pain in the ass to, to deal with. But it might be good to do some research on your mics. As far as your second... So this is just... You'll need to watch videos on OBS. I'm gonna kind of speed through this so we can get through this video now. Just watch some videos on OBS for setting up recording. So if you have an AMD card versus an NVIDIA card, you might need to change some settings in OBS a little bit. It's gonna depend on your specific circumstances. And then obviously have your second monitor set up so you can monitor your, make sure you can look over, just glance and see, okay, things are recording fine, the audio looks good, and video feed is still fine. So it's good to just have that stuff set up. Light boxes, you can go onto somewhere like Amazon and buy a couple of light boxes for about 80 bucks. There are these big light boxes like this big with these, and they usually come with, so I guess you can't see it here. They're big boxes though. And they come with these gigantic light bulbs that you screw into the light box. And they've got this diffuser that goes over them to soften the light. Two of those work great. If you put those at 45 degree angles in front of you, so when you're making videos like I'm making here right now, I don't have them turned on right now. But if I had those turned on, it's it's good lighting. Two light boxes is plenty. I'll cover the pro cameras real quick because I'm obviously using one on this video here. I'm not using a cell phone. If you're new to this, I don't recommend doing this. If you have the money to spend and you really want to do it, that's great. I could cover this more in depth later. Lenses, make sure you do a lot of study. So you'll need a camera body. So Canon, Sony, Panasonic, although they're, they're, they all have their differences and then also study the lenses. So you'll need to know the difference between a prime lens and a zoom lens and what is a focal length and do I, what am I going to need for, like do I need a VND filter? Things like that. And then also a lot of these lenses are locked. Sometimes you, I think you can get, for the most part, converter kits that will light to use with different brands. But some of these you might end up getting locked into one brand. So if you buy like a $2,000 Sony lens, maybe it doesn't have an adapter to be able to use it with Canon. So just make sure that you are aware of that stuff. Spend a lot of research on this before you drop the money and make sure that it's going to fit your needs. All of these brands, autofocus is not made equal. Now I've only had a couple of issues during the last almost year of me filming videos with this camera now, where the audio autofocus was a little glitch and I had to put my hand up like this and, and get the autofocus to clear because it would like focus on the background, for example. But some of these camera makers do not have good autofocus. You really need to have good autofocus because chances are you're not gonna have someone that can operate the camera for you. And if you're going and filming a video and it can't focus properly on you, then it's going to screw up your footage. Weather resistance, if you're gonna be filming outside, you need to make sure that your camera is not going to fry from being out in a little bit of rain. I already talked about VND filters. This is just something you put on over the front of the lens. Like if it's sunny outside, then you need to have your VND filter to keep the, the image from getting blown out. Flip out screens is really important. So the camera that I'm using right now has a flip out screen so I can see a live feed of my camera. So I can see the, the battery storage. I can make sure the camera's working. Computer plug and play is good. I just use a USB cable from the camera to my computer. Color calibration, you'll have to learn how to set up your colors. You'll need to get the the, the color, there's like a color, I can't remember what it's called. It's like a color box that will make sure that all of the cameras or all of the colors for the camera are accurate. And then there's also a, I believe it's called a white balance filter or box or something like that. It's this thing that you'll, it'll, ex, you can get one that usually like expands out. So you can make sure that your grays and your whites and all that are accurate. So that way you've got good colors on your camera. You'll need to know how to set up LUTs. 
So you'll do that through your editing software. If you're gonna get a professional camera, do not get a cheap $40 tripod that's gonna blow over in the wind and break your camera. You need to have a solid, heavy tripod that when you set it somewhere, that it's not just gonna, a, a puff of something is just gonna blow it over and take your camera with it. And you can get a good quality tripod about 100 to 150 bucks. If you need a, if you get a tripod, you, they might, it might already come with an Arca Swiss plate. If it doesn't, you'll need to buy one. It's something that attaches to like the bottom of your camera and then you attach that camera to your tripod and then you tighten down the Arca Swiss plate to the tripod so it doesn't go anywhere. You'll of course wanna make sure you get some extra, I recommend OEM batteries. You could do generic if you want to. I don't know whether or not they are going to be as good like quality wise as OEM. I just stick with OEM. And you need to make sure you get a good SD card. So if you wanna film like 4K, and so it's actually recording at higher than 4K. And so I have to have a SD card that is capable of having that throughput. So I, this was the, the specifications for mine. So about a hundred, so if you wanted like a 128 gigabyte SD card, probably cost you about a hundred bucks each. And you should ideally have a couple of them at least. Now, as far as content ideation, I'm going to say this, don't overcomplicate this. I've already talked about this. Just write stuff out. It's, it will be just fine. It, coming up with ideas for content is going to be as hard as you make it out to be. If you're gonna make it out to be this big long process, then it's going to be difficult for you to come up with something to talk about every week or two week two videos a week or however much. Generally speaking, it's going to help you out a lot more. Either speak what you know about or what you have passionate about. Opinions are fine if you're gonna do an entertainment focused channel, then inter opinions are just fine. That's a big thing with entertainment channels. But if you want to do educational videos, this is something you should stick to. Educational videos are not going to mix well with a ton of opinions. You can get away with it every now and then, but it shouldn't be used constantly. And then just make yourself some content pillars because that will help you come up with ideas of things to talk about. So like I said, this was for business executives originally. So what I broke it down into was marketing, sales, and skill acquisition. Each of these are their own things under, so business would be like a pillar and then marketing. So then marketing breaks down into things like branding, content creation, social media, like knowing the social media platform insights, things like that. Then you could have a pillar focused around tech, and then some of this stuff could cross over with, the, with one another. And you can also come back and revisit topics. And I don't think I have done this yet. I'm about ready to do a new Windows hardening guide because some things have changed since when I first posted the video on my channel almost a year ago, some things have changed. So you can come back and revisit stuff about six months to a year. You can update, you can freshen stuff up and revisit the topic. Just don't do it frequently. Give it six months to a year is pretty good. There is a ton of stuff covered in this video. I hope you got some use out of this video. I hope that it helped you out with your mindset of going and making videos because I cannot tell you, I cannot emphasize this enough. YouTube, even though this is not a job for me, I'm not doing this full time. I don't have, I'm not, don't plan to take this full time and be posting five videos a week on this channel and doing a bunch of sponsorships and all that. This is already having some pretty significant changes in my life that I would have never thought possible. And it's all because I make videos on things that I want to talk about. It's literally that simple. And I make a lot of videos talking about things like cybersecurity. There's no one that I can go talk to in real life that is interested in talking about that, but there's a, an audience online that wants to talk about that same thing and hear about that same thing. I can go make a video talking about that and then they wanna hear it and then by proxy, other things come up that are good, that help me out, like these opportunities that come along. You know, even though I'm saying no to sponsorships, it, like it's just been unreal that this opportunity can even happen just because Again, I get to make videos about things that I want to talk about. There's no point in making yourself miserable. And one of the things that I see people fall into with YouTube, and it's, I think it's maybe one of the reasons that you see some people make these videos where they're like, you know what, I burned out, I don't wanna be doing this anymore, is they have treated it too much like it is something like a job, which I know there's some people that turn YouTube into a job, but they, they take it so seriously 
that I think it destroys their outlook of the platform and then they become resentful of it. There's no need for that. This is, like I said, it's going to be as hard as you make it out. It, making videos is hard, but like coming up with the ideas and really at the end of the day making videos is going to be as hard as you make it out to be. Once you get past the challenges of being able to use a video editor and r make thumbnails and things like that, this really is not that difficult. It's, like I said, it's just an unbelievable opportunity. Anyway, I hope the video helped you out. If you have any questions on anything, go ahead and drop them down below. I'll probably revisit some of this stuff in the future and cover it, cover it more in depth. There are certain things that I would like to talk about. One of the things that I didn't talk about was controversy marketing, which I forgot to put in here. It's probably something I should have covered, but I'll, I'll make that a video on that another time. But there's things I can, I can come back and revisit this in more, in more depth later if people are interested. Just go ahead and drop a comment down below if that's something, if there's something particular you want to see. As always, I appreciate the support and I hope you have a good weekend and I will see you next Friday.